for not correcting it years ago. Amen. I've been pastoring here four years. Well, four years in January. And I've been around this church a long time before that. But I've been around the church for over 40 years. Shame on us if we can't get it right. It becomes like toxic waste. And it starts pulling everybody in. Trying to make sides. There's only one side. Joshua said, who's on the Lord's side? Oh, we're on the Lord's side. No, 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 we're on the Lord's side. You better make sure you're on the Lord's side. And let me just make it plain for some of you that don't understand. An ugly spirit is on the devil's side. Gossiping is on the devil's side. Tailbearing is on the devil's side. Oh, it got a little quiet on that one now. Backbiting, that's on the devil's side. Not supporting your sister or your brother, that's on the devil's side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm looking towards the goal. Right. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I got to get it right. Yes, sir. That newspaper, Sister Waddy, let me calm things down a little bit. Some folks are getting riled up. Let me, let me just calm some things down. That newspaper, the Wharton paper, they had to put an article in there about a 5K. My, my wife saw that. She got all excited. <laughs> oh, hon, let's do the 5K. Oh, joy, let's do it. Right. And I need to do it. 3.2 miles. But I made up my mind. All right, if I'm going to do this, then I got to get rid of the excess weight. That's rubbish. I'm kind of thankful we're starting the Daniel fast. All right, now. This walk's on October the 10th, so I got a whole month to train. Yes, sir. So when y'all see me losing weight over this next month, it's not just calls from the Daniel fast. <laughs> right. All right. Amen. I went to the track last night, Brother Waddy. I did. And I got on that track and we started walking. I did a lap. Felt good. Did two laps. I felt even better. I did three laps and I'm still going strong. Because that's, you know, a quarter mile each time. Then Jonathan, he decides to get out of the buggy. <laughs> and when a five-year-old shows you what real energy is all about. Yep. Well, he just took off. And then he turned around like, can you hurry up, you know? And he'd take off and go a little bit more. Yeah. Then he'd fall out on the ground. <laughs> then he'd get back up. He'd take off and run again. Because he's not burdened down. All right. All right. A lot of excess weight. Yes. I mean, he's got that metabolism. I mean, as soon as he eats something, man, he's burning it up. I mean, you know, he's got that energy. But dad, dad's got 43 years of living. Dad's got 43 years of eating good. Amen. Huh? Dad's got 43 years of steak and potatoes and gravy. Barbacoa. I had me three barbacoa tacos this morning. Oh, they were so good. I know that's probably not going to be in my training diet, but I had to eat one before the fast. <laughs> Laugh at me, it's okay. But the thing is, is if I'm going to finish this race, I got to get rid of the excess weight. 
I got to get rid of the garbage in my life. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I got to change my diet. Because yes, I'm in training. Yes, sir. I want to be able to do that 3.2 miles and not have it hurt me. Because the last one I did, it wasn't that easy. I was feeling it for a couple of days. But I hadn't really prepared for it. I just thought, you know what? I'll get out here and do it and I'll just, because I'm still young. No, I'm not. All right. Young people were passing me, just trotting on by and laughing at me. <laughs> and you may finish this race, but if you have to carry all this baggage, Oh God. How many enjoy when Brother Alba came down here, preached a few weeks ago? Boy, doesn't he look good? He still needs to lose some more weight. I spoke that as a brother-in-law, not as a pastor. But you know what he told me? He says, I got to go. 5,000. I got to do 5,000 steps every day. I got to walk 5,000 steps or more. He said, because if I don't, he says, I'm just going to retain what I got. But I got to get rid of it. Because it's affecting my health. And it's affecting my life. And if I don't change my ways, I'm going to have a heart attack. And I got too much to live for. You know, that's the church is a living being. And if all we feed into the church is junk. Is all you, if, if, if all you eat is junk food. Brother, why do you know? Junk food and tea and Dr. Peppers. Equals kidney stone. I remember being a 20-year-old young man. I love greasy food. Chicken. Pizza. I worked in a pizza place for two years cooking pizzas. Pizza's a greasy food, but I ate it. I ate it every day. I loved it. Then I started getting pain shooting through my body. And I went to the doctor. You got gallstones. You've been eating lots of greasy food, haven't you? Yes, sir. That's what causes gallstones. It builds up in your gallbladder. Now, I can say that the Lord healed me, and I thank God for that. I didn't have to have the procedure. I didn't have to lose my gallbladder. But let me tell you something. I had to change eating some things after a while. Yes, sir. Because you eat certain foods, it would spark it. Yes, sir. And it's kind of like the church. We let some certain things in, it right. begins to spark that division. All right. All right. So we got to break that stronghold that's yes. in this church. Yes. Hallelujah. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if any and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. We've got to be in the same mind. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have as us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You know, we really need to start looking vertically, not horizontally. We better understand God's watching everything we do. He's in on every conversation. He's in every household. Hallelujah. I 
can tell you how the Lord's woke me up in the middle of the night over the last few weeks. Showing me some things. Because he loves this church. We need to stop justifying our actions. Do you know when submission really starts? I'm submitted to you, Pastor. Do you know when submission really starts? Is when you don't agree with Pastor. Now that's not something Brother Bounds spoke that at NAYC Didn't he young people Submission starts When you don't agree with pastor If I can't believe pastor's doing that I ain't going to be a part of it Go ahead Fight the pulpit It's okay God's got me Well, I don't know why so and so is in leadership. Brother Bumgarner should set them down. Well, maybe you don't know what's going on in their life. Maybe a little bit more compassion and a little more prayer All right. would help. All right. But we don't act like that. We act that out in the flesh. We're going to let everybody know where we stand. And it's like picking at a scab. Anybody ever done that? And the wound never heals because all you do is pick at the scab. And you start living a life of deception. Where you're sitting in a pew and you think you're right with God. But because of the stinking attitude and the rubbish that's in your life that is affecting not just you but the church. It's going to cost you your soul. Good word. Good word. I'm not screaming this. I'm just softly preaching this because I am trying to make sure you understand your soul is at stake, child of God. There have been preachers of the gospel who have lost out because they were deceived in their own spirit. I read something today that just Stirred my heart last night. I, I told my wife, boy, this is true. A pastor friend of mine posted that a pastor that allows worldliness to come into the church is a false prophet and the church a harlot church. And the sad thing is, it's not just you, but it's the generations that come after you. You are putting a curse on future generations in your family. Hatfield and McCoys. Well, what started? We don't know. We just know they're Hatfields and we're McCoys. You don't know what the original fight was? No, we don't know. We just know if your name's McCoy, I'm going to shoot you. And if your name's Hatfield, I'm going to take you out. And I want to tell you something. We better be careful because it breathes into the church. Yes, it does. Yes, yes, yes. And you're not only affecting yourself, but you're affecting generations to come. You got children that are lost. And you're still stuck in rubbish. And it's affecting your prayers. You say, oh, Brother Baumgartner, surely not. You can weep and cry and Put crocodile tears on an altar all you want. But if there's a fence there. That's good. Brother Bacchus, you've quoted it many times. That if you got all with a brother. You better leave your gift at the altar. And go find them. And make it right. Because that don't mean nothing to God. Right. Right. You can cry all you want. You, you may have the ability to make your own decisions. But you don't have the ability to determine the outcome or the consequences. Right. 
You get a resentful spirit against somebody in the church, and that little baby's growing up. Hey. All right. Come on. Now, I'm just taking my time today. Y'all won't see me tonight, so I want to make sure we get it before I leave today. But that baby hears everything you say at home. That baby sees every action you do. Yeah, they do, yes. And then you're years down the road, Brother Bob Gunner, I don't know why they don't want to live for God. I don't know why they got a problem with the church. I don't know why they don't want, you know, they've been hurting this and that. Mama, look in the mirror. Daddy, look in the mirror. You've allowed rubbish to be infested into their life and the toxicity of the waste and the putridness of that spirit has infected them and the likelihood of them coming back to church and getting right with God is even harder because you refuse to forgive and forget and move on. Yes, sir. That's good. Oh, well, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Bye, bye, bye. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for your word, Lord. You say, Brother Bumgarner. Anybody ever know who Athaliah was? Who's Athaliah? Well, she was the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab, you were raised right. Ahab, you were raised around the church. Ahab, you went to the temple. But you decided to serve other gods. You decided to make it all about you, Ahab. Then you brought Jezebel in. And Jezebel, she begins to you know, Hallelujah. go another direction. And their offspring is Athaliah. And Athaliah, she was a wicked woman. And the death of her husband and her son Ahaziah, she made up in her mind she was going to be queen. See, she just that spirit that was on mama got on her. Yes. Right. Yes. Ladies, I'm going to tell you something. You better war against the spirit of Jezebel. Come on now. That spirit that wants to usurp authority. It. it ain't all about being all gaudy and painted up. It's a spirit that usurps authority. Come on. And yes, there are some of you that battle it in this church, and I know who you are. It ain't no cloak and dagger. Pastor loves you. Pastor's working with you. Pastor's praying for you. But I know who you are, and I pray for you. Thank you for your word. 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 Oh, hallelujah. She was so wicked that when her son died, she set out to destroy all the seed royal. And that's what happens as it moves from generation to generation. It begins to kill off the seed of God. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm bringing a warning to this church this morning. I'm coming today with a burden as a pastor and as a man of God. I'm bringing warning. You better make it right with God. You better get rid of rubbish. Uh, did you hear what I just said? Amen. We have focused so much on getting things right with a brother or a sister. But the Lord told me they're not right with me. They better get it right with me. Hey. Yes, sir. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you? Yes, sir. How am because there's generations coming up. And if you're not careful, you're going to keep off, kill off the seed of what God has for the future, the revival of the future, not just in your own family, but in this church. And I will not stand by and be passive. Right. Right. You say, well, you want us to leave, Brother Bone? No, I want you to repent. I want you to repent. I want you to get a hold of God and say, God, if there's rubbish in my life, Get it out. If I've got something against a brother or sister, get it out of me. I want to be a child of God. I want my children saved. I want my family saved. And I don't want this mess in me anymore. 
You've got some stinking thinking that you need to get rid of. Can you stand to your feet and pray with me right now? Don't tell me you love me if you're going to attack me behind my back. Please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't tell me you love me if you're going to attack me behind my back. Don't tell me you support me as a pastor if you're, if you're not going to support me as a pastor. I try to do things with gentleness and love and kindness. My objective is not to beat anybody up. But I am digging down deep today. Because there is a cancer that has attacked our church. And it has been here for a long time. And just like a tumor, it continues to grow and not go away. And folks, we've got to get rid of this. If we're going to have a revival. Yes. Yes. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We've got to remove the rubbish. Now, the Lord gave me another scripture Isaiah, the 44th chapter, and the 26th verse. He says, That confirmeth the word of his servants and performeth the counsel of his messengers. That saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited. And to the cities of Judah, Ye shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith to Cyrus, He is my shepherd, And shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, And to the temple Thy foundation shall be laid. If we can just remove the rubbish. God's saying I can build it. But if we don't get rid of the rubbish. Then slowly the church will just decay away. I'm calling to you this morning, Peace Tabernacle. Prayer warriors, will you begin to pray with me this morning? I'm reaching for you today. Let go. not affecting that brother or sister that you have an issue with. It's affecting your relationship with God. You say there's nothing wrong with my relationship with God. Don't be deceived. I'm opening these altars today for the church family. Lord, get the rubbish out. Lord, get the rubbish out. Transform me, Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost. My attitude, my spirit, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for a bad attitude, Lord. Forgive me for a bad spirit. Forgive me, Lord, for bringing that rubbish into this church. I want to be saved, and I want my children to be saved, and I want my grandchildren to be saved. But I know, Lord, i got to get rid of this mess in my life. The book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, to all of our visitors and guests, I want to say a very heartfelt thank you for coming today to worship with us here at Peace Tabernacle. 
we are grateful today for the power of the Lord that is here and we're grateful that you are here today amen we want you to come back and be a part of our family amen you know family is family good bad in between and the church is the body of Christ we are a family Brother Waddy, you are my brother. Whether you like it or not. And so you got to take me for everything good about me and everything bad about me. There may be some things that I do that gets on your nerves. Just like a brother. And sometimes you may want to make a comment like I heard Jonathan say this week. <clears throat> He's banning all girls from his room. He made a declaration. He was only going to let boys in his room. No sisters allowed. And then he even got worse. He said, and no big brothers allowed either. He was marking his territory. He was proclaiming his independence. But you know, no matter how many times we try to lock a brother or a sister out. Come on, Come on now. When we need them. Come on. Yeah. We sure want them there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a thought. Amen. This starting September the 1st, pastor's going on a Daniel fast. A Daniel fast is a 21-day fast. Amen. We, now, I tell folks, please tailor this to you. I don't want you to feel like that. Now, we, we try to give up meats. We try to give up, and we base it off Daniel. And uh, if anybody has a question, we went over this last year. You know, we, we try to eat lentils, and we try to eat things that are good for us amen there's a whole list of things and uh, i will get with you on those wednesday night but uh we are going to step up and do it once again so, several have told me they look forward to it they they said so i feel so much healthier yes, sir. and i guess if you need me to be your taskmaster i'll, I'll be your taskmaster and that was a joke but we're setting aside some time I want to fast and pray for our church, pray for the kids that are in school, pray for where God is taking us, amen, for the end of this year, and uh, I believe it's a time that we can set apart and seek God do great things, amen, amen. praise God. Now I kind of I wrestled, I don't like dismissing Sunday night service, but we have been doing on the last, on a five Sundays in a month, we've taken the fifth Sunday month off, and so brother Waddy's going to be preaching for brother Mike Williams they do it backwards they usually don't have Sunday night except for on the fifth Sunday of a month they have a night service so brother Waddy's going to be preaching for him tonight and anybody that wants to go down and be in support of that I encourage you to do so amen and then next Sunday night is Labor Day and uh, and I wrestled with well but I know families it's the end of summer school's really just getting started so pastor's going to say okay if you need to take that Sunday night and Monday to go to the camping, I don't know where Brother David is, but I want to make sure he gets the opportunity to go camping. I don't want to be in trouble for not letting him go camping. But uh, I believe in family. And I believe families need to take time and spend time together. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I believe it's very, family's very important to me. And so... I encourage you to do that. Next Sunday, we're going to come back in here. Amen. We're going to have another power pack service. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to let the Lord have his way. I'm very thankful for this past week. We had a great regional camp meeting. Yes, sir. And uh, yes, sir. at first, I didn't know how it was going to go. And, and, you know, it's a little different setup than the old time way of going to the campground. But the power 
God that was in those services. And I'm not going to complain that I got to drive an hour home each night and sleep in my own bed. So that wasn't a bad thing. I, I, I count that a privilege. So uh, I can remember days and, and perhaps maybe we'll find a campground in the area and, and tell Brother Gurley. Now, we want to have an old time camp meeting, so we found a campground for you. But uh, so we can camp out and eat spam. Yes. Everybody like spam? Some folks don't like it, but when I was a kid, we went to the campground, and after church, we'd go down and sit around the old table and put make a little spam sandwich. And no, that's not something that you get in your email, folks. That's something you eat. But you know what? I'm thankful for the word of God that was preached, yes, sir. for those that participated, helping in children's ministry, helping in the choir. Hey, next year, let's participate even more. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I want to turn to the book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter and the ninth verse. The word of God reads, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter and the ninth verse. I come today with a burden. I want revival. Yes, sir. I want a move of God in this church. I didn't come to Wharton, and, I, and please excuse me, I'm not trying to, to hurt anybody's feelings, as his Brother Backus said, but I did not come to Wharton to waste my time. Come on. Amen. That's good. As far back as I can remember, I have been a revivalist. I believe in revival. Amen. Amen. I believe that revival and reaching souls is our number one priority. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But nevertheless, Nehemiah 4 and 9 reads, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Now, I preached some last week on the building of the wall, but this has been with me all week, and I will hit this again today. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. And there is much rubbish. Everybody say rubbish. rubbish. Say garbage. garbage. Say trash. trash. Say nonsense. nonsense. So that we are not able to build the wall. I'm going to preach today removing the rubbish. If we're ever going to have revival, we got to get rid of the garbage. If we're ever going to have revival, we got to get rid of the trash. Amen. That's good. Lord, in your name, I pray today, mighty God, that you'd anoint this vessel one more time. Anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear, Lord. Bring understanding to our mind today that we might grow closer to you. And in all things, we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And somebody say, in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. I enjoyed camp meeting so much. And through every message that was preached, and let me just say this. Thank you, Peace Tabernacle, for we had a great contingency of our church at camp meeting. Yes. And if you did not make it to camp meeting, you missed out. Amen. There was anointed singing. There was anointed preaching. Amen. Even the bilingual service was probably one of the best bilingual services that I had ever been to. Sometimes, Sister, Sister Dia, they, send, they tend to get stuck a little bit. But that service flowed, and I was thankful for it. To, amen. There was no skipping a beat or out of place. It just flowed. And I, was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed camp meeting. And Brother Gurley preached about one spark and that one spark he preached about is unity yes. All right. and yes. we preached unity around this church till i'm sick of preaching about unity come on now hey i'm tired of telling saints of god get along with each other that's rubbish i'm tired of saints of god acting like devils when something ain't right and you can act all sanctimonious and spiritual all you want to. 
But the Lord, you know, you say, well, the Lord knows my heart. Yes, he does. And he sees the wickedness, he sees the craftiness, and he sees the discord that you sow amongst the body. Come on. Brother Burnett, boy, he hit it the next night. Yes, he did. Rise up, mighty men. Yes, sir. If there's ever a time the church needed to rise up, it's now. Yes, sir. With the world get waxing worse and worse and individuals, a, a man attacking the church uh, more than it's ever been attacked before, this is not a time for the church to be weakened by discord. It's time that we unify together and rise up for one cause to reach the lost. And if that wasn't enough, Brother McLaughlin, my good old classmate from 1993 TBC gets up and preaches about mastering the wound. Everybody's gone through things. Everybody's been hurt. But you got to take that what you've been hurt by and allow God to use it to, for his glory. I'm not going to re-preach their messages. I just want you to know that it felt like each one of those preachers stepped into our congregation and addressed some things uh, that God wants to address. I want a revival of souls. I'm thankful for the crowd that's here today. Amen. There's a nice crowd here. Today. I'm thankful for souls that are here today. But, oh, God, I want there to be an awakening in the midst of Peace Tabernacle. I want to see God pour out His Spirit upon this church. I read my text. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night. Do you know we are, we are involved in spiritual warfare? All right. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. But an enemy knows this. I don't have to fight them if they're fighting amongst themselves. All right. my, my, my. Come on now. Every great general knows. Look for the weak spot. Look for the, where they're vulnerable. The enemy never attacks us where we're strong. He's always looking for that weak spot. He's always looking for that area where he can just move in and, and tear apart the church. I want you to know the enemy wants to tear this church apart. He doesn't want us to be what God has prophesied that we would be. Uh, he don't want us to become a, a church that influences this entire region. He would rather us be a church uh, that separates, that causes discord amongst each other, that falls out. Come on. Now, I'm not preaching for applause today. Uh, I'm not preaching for somebody just to pat me on the back. Uh, I'm preaching because I care about souls. Uh, and I care about uh, your eternity. Uh, I care about how much you're going to make it. Uh, and I want you to know it frustrates me. It aggravates me when you allow the enemy to use you. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. That's good. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Bring every darkness into the light of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Say hello, Lord. Now, if you're a visitor, guess I, I'm preaching today to this church, and I, I pray that you will hear me as a pastor. Come back next Sunday, and I'll preach a shouting message. All right. But we live too much in a day and age where it's pretty words in a church house. All right. Hey. I want somebody to preach to me to save me. And Judah said, men of Judah begin to speak up, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. I wanted to, and I looked for it, and I couldn't find one. Because I tend to throw decayed wood away. I wanted to get a couple of cement blocks and put some decayed wood on there. and Tell Brother Staines, I want you to get on there and jump up and down on that board. 
You'd have enjoyed that, wouldn't you, Brother Myers? Yeah, he would have. You know, and as soon as I got that, as soon as I did that, several would grab their phones and they're going to record that. That's going to make Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. It's, well, they're going to put that. Because you know that decayed wood. I can tell it's decayed. I can tell it's. Woo. I mean, if you were hiring somebody to work on your house. And they showed up to your house and all they had is a bunch of decayed lumber. It's got splinters all in it. All right. And that man steps up on the job site. Yeah, we're going to build that new room for you. I got the lumber right here. <laughs> You'd be like, no, you're not going to build that in my house. You better go back to Zarsky's to get your money back. There's something about decayed wood, brother. Waddy, being a carpenter's son, I've, I've, I've messed with a lot of decayed wood. Nasty wood. I've had to help remodel a lot of bathrooms. This lady's bathroom wasn't my first. <laughs> I've gone in there and when the mildew and the water damage sets in, that wood just rots after many, many years. And, and, and Sister Waddy... I mean, you hit the board, and, and it just burst. There's no substance in it. There's no stability in it. It's decayed. Time and water and environment has taken its toe on it. You can't drive a nail in it because it, 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 the wood won't hold a nail. You can't put a screw in it because the wood won't hold a screw. And you step on it, and it's, it's going to give way. You can't build nothing on it. And the writers said, the, the men of Judah, they spoke up and said, the bearers, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. Yes. Too many times we, we feel like we're strong. You know, I can jump on this because I'm walking and it's strong. But there have been some places I've preached and I'm walking across that platform and I feel it give a little bit. Yes, sir. And I'm thinking to myself, big boy, don't you jump. Because if you jump, you may not <laughs> stop. You may go through the floor. And I have watched individuals go through floors. All right. I've watched individuals go through roofs. Brother Salome, you know what I'm talking about. You get some 200 plus pound fellow on top of a roof and he ain't exactly confident and he missteps and steps on an old piece of decking and next thing you know you're repairing sheetrock on the other side. It happens. But where is the strength? Of the bearers of burdens today. And there is much rubbish. There is much to be removed. There's a lot of garbage. Rubbish is worthless, useless, or unwanted matter. Discarded or waste matter, refuge. Then we can go into this. It is foolish words or speech or actions meant to criticize or to attack verbally. That is rubbish. You've ever gone to some place and you've had to build something? I know what it is to have to deal with rubbish. That comes from being an only son of a carpenter and a contractor. So if we got to a job site and there was stuff to be picked up, guess who got to pick it up? 
Guess who had to load the trailer? And guess who had to put a smile on their face while they did it? Because I was going to get a big gulp. Some of y'all don't even know what a big gulp is. And even though we didn't like it, we knew that before we could do it right, before we could build it back right, we had to get rid of the rubbish. Some of y'all around here at the church when we did the ladies' bathroom remodel. There was a lot of rubbish that had to be moved out. There was a lot of work that had to take place so we could put the new stuff in. Believe me, there was a whole trailer full. It was nasty. It was dingy. I'm just being truthful. Some of you men that helped will amen me this morning. Rubbish. Junk. Garbage. But before the new could go in, the old had to come out. You see, that wall there had been attacked by the enemy and destroyed. And so the effects of the destruction of the wall were still laid around. And before they could build the wall, they had to clean up the remnants of the wall that had been there before. Because the enemy is not going to build the wall back in your life. We need to make sure that we understand that the rubbish in our life hinders us from getting what we need from the Lord. Now, I, I know, I know I'm, I'm preaching to myself, I guess, this morning. We say we want revival. We say we want a move of God. We say we want unity. We say we, we want God to do great things. But actions speak louder than words. Now hold off this morning. God sees and He knows everything. But if we're going to have revival in our future, we've got to get rid of the rubbish of the past. Some of you are trying to build spiritual houses on rubbish. You're trying to build your spiritual life on the mess of your past. I know Brother McLaughlin touched on a lot of this, but that is the truth this morning. You know, there's garbage heaps from your past that you brought with you in the house of God. And instead of like Brother Burnett preached when he was living in Panama, letting the Spirit of God clean some things out, you've kept some things in your life. You brought some things with you from the world that you've not let go of. And you're trying to build a spiritual house on a carnal mindset. Hallelujah. Warren Salters. This gentleman lives in Havelock, North Carolina. He started realizing there was something wrong with his yard. Because just below the surface, he started digging up glass and spark plugs, even the hood to an old truck. He realized that people's yards were starting to, to drop and sink. And what used to be flatland for the kids to play football in now became big sunken areas. Trees that had been planted five years before you looked at them and they're tilted downhill toward where everything is sinking. And the reason why is because the neighborhood was built on an old landfill. Now many knew that the landfill had been there, but they built anywhere, anyway. Somebody said, I actually remember where they put an old school bus. But it was an old landfill. Mr. Salters put a call into the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. 
And there they begin to uh, study the soil and, and uh, they found just two feet down decomposed garbage and, and sewage wa and waste and, and uh, things that uh, were toxic and they were just underneath the surface of the ground. One, one man said, you know, I tried to plant a garden and it would start up pretty good but then everything would just die. What would you think when you looked out the back door of your house and all of a sudden your backyard is gone? We can't build a church on the rubbish of the past. Peace Tabernacle, you've got to hear your pastor this morning. Please hear your pastor this morning. I don't know what it's going to take but we can't build a church in the future on the rubbish of the past. Right. Come on. We can't have revival. Right. Mm. If we're going to let the stinking carnal flesh make us a bunch of hypocrites. Come on now. That's good. That's the truth. The scripture says... If you can't love your brother, then you can't love me. And you can talk about loving your brother and oh, I've forgiven him, but I'm so sick of hearing I forgive somebody, but. Believe me, I'm trying to stay in control this morning. I'm trying to preach with a, a burden. But don't tell me you've forgiven somebody. Don't tell me you love somebody if you're going to follow it up with a but. Hey, come on now. If you forgive somebody, forgive them. Love them. Treat them right. Don't be disrespectful. All right. All right. Come on now. If I've forgiven you, then it's behind us. I love you. I'm going to walk arm in arm with you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm not going to walk away from you. But I'm going to walk with you. You make yourself out to be a hypocrite. And my granny always said it like this. The devil, he wears a hypocrite shoe. If you don't watch out, he'll slip it on you. Don't tell me you love the Lord and then you want to act like the devil. I want a church to be built right. I want a church to be holy. I want a church that doesn't have to be built on a bunch of garbage. We got to get the garbage out. We got to get the rubbish out. Brother McLaughlin said it like this. You've been in 20 church for 20 plus years, but you're still stuck on things from 15 years ago. There's rubbish in this church from so many years ago. You think everybody don't know what's going on, but the whole church knows what's going on, and you're not fooling anybody. Come on. You say you're going to make somebody mad, Brother Bumgarner. You're going to cause somebody to leave. I'm going to tell you this. I'd rather get a job and earn a living for my family and have a church uh, without a bunch of mess than individuals in a church uh, who don't love God because they don't love their brother or their sister. Come on. Come on. I, I, I know I know, I got visitors today, but this message has to be preached. If we're going to move forward, we've got to get the rubbish out. We've got to remove the nonsense. The Lord has promised this church many things, but there is rubbish that is hindering the Lord from being able to accomplish what he desires. When this sister can't support this sister and this brother can't support this brother and I'm not going to this and I'm not going to that and if they get up, I'm going to walk out the door. Well, then you better walk on out the door and go to hell. I 
I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I love everybody. You know I love you. I've been over backwards for you. I try to be kind. I try to be merciful. But I want you to know I want a move of God. See, too many times people mistake my kindness for timidity. Talk, talk about it. Preach about it. Tell it. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. 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 But I will not abuse this pulpit. All right. Right. All right. I'm not going to use this pulpit as my beating stick. All right. Yes, sir. But if I have a word from the Lord, I'm going to speak it plain. I was preaching a long time before I came to Wharton. I'm in 20 plus years of ministry. I didn't just wake up and get on the bandwagon. This has been my heartbeat. This has been my passion. This has been my life's desire. It has cost me a great deal. I've lost a lot of things because of the ministry, but I am okay with that. I, I, I count it all joy to suffer for the king's sake. But I see the potential of our great church. I do. I see our potential. I see what we can become. I've been part of the power pack services when the power of God comes down. I know what we can become. But if we're going to become that, we've got to get rid of the rubbish. Paul said it like this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, uh, forgetting those things. All right. All right. Come on. Forgetting those things that are behind me. You can't go back and live them over. I don't care what somebody said. I don't care what somebody did. I don't care what sin somebody was involved in. If they put it under the blood, leave it there. Oh, hallelujah. We got to stop acting like we're in the world. I am not angry as much as I am burdened. Right. That's a good word. Good. 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 To those things which are before. I can see what God has for us just right on the other side of the hill. Yes. But I know that there's things that are hindering us. Yes. Come on, there were things blocking the breaches. The enemy was able to come in and out of the city because of the rubbish. Amen. The, the, you couldn't build the wall proper because there's stuff there. And we've not really been able to build a wall here because of the rubbish. And I know that there are some of you who have been in this church a long time. Shame on you.